Well, you know, I'll talk about something which started yesterday, and it is the main subject that we tackled during our workshop. And in a way, I have an impression, in a way, I have an impression that we are, we've made a circle and we are coming back to the original source. As I told you already, well, at the beginning, it was just a group of 20 people that didn't know each other, and they used internet to communicate, they were scriptwriters, they were having quarrels, but anyway, they prepared the film. We didn't have the money, it was just the problem that we discussed a moment ago. It was known that Film Spring would organize the equipment, and the f equipment, it was many camera, and just... It was ridiculous, just a couple of small things. And everything else they organized by themselves at home in their countries. Initially, these were just two uh, countries, Switzerland and Germany. Uh, later on, we had Norwegians and French. Yes, French people are still with us. I know that they are less numerous because the dates aren't the best for them, but okay. It is the, these are the days selected by the hotel, not by us. But anyway, they prepared the film at home, they prepared the props, and they had an idea, for example, like a car crash. And I said, you're idiots, car crash without professional resources, you can't do it. But they were stubborn. And yes, Norwegian girls, one of them, she was a makeupist. So she completed a special course to make up uh, the victims and it was so funny um, because some old old woman um, she was really old uh, and she was made up by the young girl as a um, person with a face uh, really split into two but the old woman was so proud of the makeup that she spent the whole day walking around in with her funny face but anyway June um, my lecture, I will share with you my experiences. I've done 70 films, 80 films perhaps, and it's not really about the number, but I worked in very many countries of the world and I noticed something funny, simple there. The product in the screen is exactly the same, good or bad. However, the way this product is made, differs in every country. Films are made differently in France, in Poland, in Germany, in the US, in Mexico, in Thailand. So it's surprising. Nobody analyzes this phenomena. Nobody thinks that the filmmaking methods, filmmaking methods, Translate into money spent on set. We talked so much about money yesterday. We talked about it today. But nobody says that money is spent in a silly way. And it's a fact. Us with our own hands on a professional set. I'm not talking about students' films when people work for free. Everything is done for free. Look, it's not the point. It's not why you study and work to do things for free, you want to make films which, apart from giving you pleasure, will also give you resources for proper living. So it's not a charity. We have to have some economics in it. So we have to think what can be changed. So I would like to share with you the following thought. And I will start with a little anecdote. Well, very often... This is the bottom line. Well, perhaps I exaggerate now, but um, the formula that I have made here, it is the formula that we were taught seriously in a film school. It's very easy to make a good film. What you need, tangible elements, space and time, you divide it by conflict, you add words and music, 
And in this way, you produce marvelous film. If you don't know how to do it, uh, here it's the formula. I had to memorize it. I had to pass my exam and I had to write it on the board to pass the exam. And it happened in one of the best film schools in the world in a watch in the 60s. I'm that old. Look. So the more, pardon, no, the more artists than viewers and the money shrinking yes everybody would like to be an artist the cinema goer or the viewer is very rare and in poland we have what we have 14 educational centers and last year during gdynia film festival we had 13 productions and as you could hear just a moment ago, educational issues were referred to, but the film Spring was not mentioned by any of the presenters. So perhaps we are not that bad. I don't really think that we are bad. There are other reasons for not mentioning us. And there's one more thing. If we are already talking practically about the production and how money is wasted, then something which is really puzzling, but I understand the mechanism behind it, namely, as what we do, we copy patterns that are irrelevant to us. Perhaps I should use an example of German cinematography, not to uh, accuse my colleagues. In the 70s, when I started making my first films, in Germany, I had an impression that it was a very healthy and a good cinematography model. I'm not talking about the Munich center, which is a very ambitious center indeed. I don't know whether there's a land division, but I filmed in Berlin, Hamburg, Cologne. But Berlin was Western. Berlin was a big, big center. And the model went down to the docks. Why? Because they started using American software and they started doing things that simply are not applicable in European filmmaking. They are absolutely irrelevant. And such computer programs change the cinematography model. And most people are not aware of what they are doing. I would not like, well, in a proper lecture, I should show you the software and we should analyze it point by point to show you all stupidity and the bad consequences of using the software. I will just give you a simple example. It is an example, or maybe no, not an example, another anecdote. I was filming of King Arthur, author, big Disney production, 150 million euro of Antar Foucault. He was in Europe for the first time with the film Arthur the King. So this is like one of the key myths in Anglo-Saxon culture. Before that, he made a very good, good film. It was a chamber production, in fact, whereas King Arthur was a big, big thing. And it was all very lengthy. And at a certain moment, the supervisor, vice director from Disney came to check out and learn why the filming was so slow, why after three or four weeks of filming we had so many days of delay. And he just witnessed me in my first crew, because usually in such films you have two crew, crews. I sent one or two cameramen from my crew to another crew. It was afternoon, it is meaningful. Los Angeles, so he grabbed his phone, called my agent and asked my agent why Ijak is sending two cameramen. And obviously my agent called me and she asked me, I explained why I send these people over. She called director of Disney, by director of Disney, was sitting just like you in the third row, like 50 meter away from me. He didn't find it appropriate to come to me and ask me the question. It's a funny anecdote, but look, he obeyed American standards. In American movie making, you're not allowed to talk to the star because it would be against the contract. In my contract for Harry Potter, it was highlighted. I had no right to talk to the kids starring. So this man obeyed by the 
ethics. It was an exaggeration. I'm just a DOP, not a star, and he should approach me like this. But this is how the world is constructed there. And the anecdote shows that we adopt lots of such things, rubbish. So the condition of the film director, film director, it's really misleading. The first assistant to the film director is not an assistant. First assistant to the film director is an economist. He or she is paid for doing things quickly. So he's a whip to the crew and he or she is paid. There's a bonus in the system on doing the film on time. And what is more, these people's education, they usually have a legal background and it's just a result of a very complicated system of trade unions in the States. Actors have different regulations concerning their breaks, their rights, distances that they can walk and distances that require transportation. I will not talk about it now. And in the German system that used to be yeah, they were very efficient small crews, but they started growing and growing. And first assistant of the film director was also introduced there. And such changes, such weird stuff is more and more frequent. Obviously, it also occurs in Poland and a very strong branch of industry in Poland now are commercials, advertisement films, and they adopt this very industrial approach to filmmaking. Um, commercial flip making is not really about making a film, it's about a skillful throwing out of money. You can believe me or not, I made a film in Africa for, what's the name? The Energy African Company, whatever, whatever the name was. Or perhaps it's good for me not to mention the name. You won't spy on me. So this commercial just several seconds. It was supposed to be not one minute even. It was 12 million euro. Surely you can have 400 people in your crew. We had a single helicopter and two planes. One plane for the equipment only, the other one for the crew. And the helicopter was used for um, aerial photo making. And we were making this silly film for the advertisement and it was really animated film we only had to do a couple of things two weeks flying all over southern africa and i also could see namibia beautiful country i mean beautiful if you love deserts and wilderness right so the system that we are stuck with the system that we basically copy is not healthy however to be quick now we have to f think about the grounds, film landscape, what is being changed, what remains the same, and the dynamics. Well, it's interesting when you look at the history of the European cinema in a nutshell, then when you talk about new realism in Italy. Rossellini was a cinema owner, if we can use this specific example. He was a producer and a film director in one, and the real god. And it was the era in European cinema, the era of film directors' films. But it changed very quickly, because suddenly young people, especially after the war, they started frequenting cinemas and in the US there was a real cinema bum so a proper industry branch was formed and here in Europe we became a colony of American cinema and a model of film director cinema had to defend itself it's very interesting, not commercially, but artistically, what artists did to defend themselves. I'll give you three examples. In Germany, associations of artists, film directors were formed. Fassbinder, for example, and a couple of other people, they established such an association. And in France, we had a group focused on Cahiers de Cinema, it was three, four with colleagues. And in Poland, we had team 
film teams, film groups. So it was an attempt to defend the film directors' right. And film directors, they realized that without production input, they wouldn't have any opportunity to survive. So the film director-driven cinema, or Italian realism, it sort of changed into the cinema driven by producers. That we have today, we have studio cinema. Big industry is the ruler. And it doesn't matter whether your film is fantastic or a bit less fantastic. Uh, the number of seats in cinemas for national films is limited. I travel a lot. Every single town shows American blockbusters and very rarely a European film is shown abroad. A German film, film in Denmark or a French film in Poland, it's all rare. So talking about dynamics, technical changes, you know it. When I was a student in the 60s, I had a camera that was of the size half of the rostrum and you wouldn't be able to put it on any tripod. And things changed so dynamically. And again, I remind you the history of the cinema in the slide, the cinema of film directors, cinema of producers and studio cinema. So this is the environment in which we operate. The fact that we are not mentioned. I'm sorry I say we when I am with you. I feel so terribly young. It's not really about myself. It's about you, young people. You are not being talked about. I've mentioned it also during the, con the press conference when I said honorary uh, cinema experts. Yes, there's no generational change or it's not as quick as it should be. And here I have written down certain examples for you, technological revolution, and I talk to experts, so I won't really talk about these things. However, it is interesting, and perhaps this should be a starting point to my thinking about production. The system, the point number four, too dynamic and too stable one. The system is still the same, and the system is deeply rooted in human nature. It's worth remembering, all of us, human beings, we easily accept novelties, provided they don't change our habits and traditions. And very often it's the biggest obstacle to any change whatsoever. Very quickly you take a tool, a new tool, However, the way we use the new tool, the way we cooperate, is exactly the same as it was before. If later on I talk about the changes that seem necessary and needed in the production system, this is their origin. By accepting a new tool, we don't really make our production system more efficient. Uh, it's just the opposite. Practical examples on set, not only in America, the number of people in Polish American, pardon, in Polish European films is the same, but the number should be smaller. The new tools are produced to reduce the number of people, isn't it? And another thing is, in different countries, in different countries, films are produced in absolutely different ways, and nobody analyzes this issue. In the Middle Ages, there was a principle to become a master. If you were a simple craftsman, you had to take a journey. You had to see other cultures, other techniques. Only then you could become a master. Apart from what you learned in your own town, in your own region, you had to learn from other regions to become a master. In the cinema, you have wandering professions like my own, uh, luckily, I'm quite universal with my profession, even without knowing a language. I can film all over the world, but the producer is local, and that is why these people, okay, they learn something in school or in a specific location, and they continue operating this way. It would be interesting to study it. If you cross the Vistula River in Warsaw, 
and you get to a CG project where The Witcher is produced. And you see there that they basically have a filmmaking system that is very similar. It's a younger sister of ours, but they don't make mistakes that people do in film production. They reset things, then they have collected, selected what is best for them, and they eliminated all the rest. So it's good to analyze such things. They could even use a different term for it. What the system is like, you could say it's like the birth, life and death of a young filmmaker. The birth, it's your film school. You could talk for two hours about it, but the film school in general educates you with the things of yesterday, not because it's so easy to say it. Even if somebody asked me how to change film school education, I wouldn't know. It's not possible today because the technical change dynamics is associated with the incredible change of the language and how to rebuild the school right from the beginning. The school cannot afford refreshing um, its equipment and the people that are really good in the industry, they don't have the time to read lectures in film schools. They won't be paid there. They won't be paid enough, plus they love their current job and they are not happy lecturers. I started lecturing and it was a pure co um, coincidence. During martial law, I was away from Poland, I had no way to earn the money, I had a small baby, so the only option was to teach. And a colleague of mine, who used to uh, be a grant user in Finland, he gave me this great opportunity to lecture for a week in Finland. I studied for... Three days, I started teaching in Helsinki. Uh, then after two hours, I was sweating because I was already done with all my notes. I uh, didn't know after two hours what I was to say, and I still had a full week to fill with my lecturing. I won't talk about it in public. If you want to learn the definition and how to teach others, please come to me in privacy. I'll share it with you. Well, teaching the things of yesterday... There's another reason to it. We forget about it. In universities, we forget about principal thing in the education of an artist. When you have a writer, then the distance between the potential work of this person and his own mind, his own idea, this is the length, this is the pen and a piece of paper. In music, it's a musical instrument. The education of a filmmaker is much more complicated because between the artist and the work of art, there is a whole wall of money, incredible amounts of money that has to be spent to make a film. So film schools forget about the fact that for a young filmmaker, the only place where he or she can learn who they really are, artistically speaking, the only area where they can experiment, this is the film school. You can make failures there without punishment. Well, we have a saying in Polish, without falling down, you will never learn how to walk. You have to fall down to learn something about yourself. It's a must. However, there are lecturers that punish their students because they don't like the films. Full stop. They don't like the film. That's it. And quite often lecturers forget that they used to make bad thing films or certain lecturers never made a film in their life. And the young person is not producing for people at my age, but they are producing for different audience. And the young artist is searching for their way. Oh, I wouldn't like to talk lengthy about film schools. And later on, there's the selection stage. Okay. The fundamental document is the script. And because of the overproduction, many scripts are written, very, very many scripts are written, and certain institutions are supposed to support you financially. Yesterday we had a presentation of such an institution, we had one more presentation today, but you would have to go deeper and think, well, the system that we had about yesterday and today, apart from the anecdotes that somebody sells a flat and receives 100,000 zloty or 25,000 euro for free, 
I would love to uh, experience it myself. But the system is far from justice. It's very simple, again, to put it briefly. The script can be mediocre, but if you have a good name, you have a chance to execute it. A very good script, unsupported with a good name, it's not an argument. And there's an understandable uh, risk, a threat that perhaps somebody without a big name will not make it. And it's also difficult to assess to what extent a young person is a gifted film director, because usually what you have to base your assessment upon are short films and nothing more. I talked about it two days ago. It's a paradox in education and in your preliminary practice, thinking about the Film Spring program now, for many of you, well, obviously very many of you, for very many of you, the target is to make feature films or short films. But many of you dream about making features and a feature film like any um, branch of industry, feature film with its very complicated um, architecture and very complicated, say, psychology of the production process. It is not the best train in grounds. Well, short films, I repeat this example. You don't practice long distance runner on hundreds of yards. And this is what you do in the film school. Short films after uh, school, short films, and then you are on the set of a feature film. And it's absolutely different rhythm, different way to capture and maintain the viewer. This is very important indeed. Stories are sometimes too lengthy. So well, so you can say that the script, the script is a kind of document a kind of document like a score for the opera and a good film director can give you a guarantee. You never have 100% um, guarantee. Unknown film director, lottery. And what is also important, we have to remember it. I quite often experiment like this when I make scenes, repeat the same scenes in film schools with different people. Obviously, every group will be different. We agree what we have to do, what is the message of the film. Every time people make different scenes. So it's a paradox. If you have the same text given to a hundred of different film directors with the same actors, the same money, definitely will get a hundred of different films, very different from each other. Some of them will be more similar to others. And American films, well, you will get so much footage that with the footage you will be able to make 10 or 15 films absolutely different from what you can finally see in the screen, but just by different um, approach to the composition of the elements. What is more, There's something that we are really afraid of in Europe, and we hate it, but I would encourage you to have a closer look on it. When you make big studio films like Harry Potter, or when you make computer games, people use pre-visualizations, previs. In Harry Potter, there was this corridor of 50 meters long. Um, one wall was covered with storyboards and the other wall was also full of storyboards. This is how the film was supposed to be made. You had animatics, sort of more complicated scenes in which specific computer effects, CGI and live action when they were more complicated, so then they made animatics. And later on, the films were supposed to be made based on these animatics. And it all sounds very 
um, negative because the freedom of the artist is very limited. However, I do think, and I'm deeply convinced, that if we think why they use animatics, why they make pre-visualization, what's the objective in the States, and what could be the objective in Europe, then perhaps we might think about buying the system. Perhaps in this way, we could support not only the production, but we could learn more about our material, and we could also have some good tool to control our work. And the reason why animatics are produced in the US is very simple. The people that spend the money are not artists. These are bankers, lawyers, and they use the animated format because you can exaggerate. I mean, a dragon must be monstrous. A hundred of extras, it's very easy to draw a picture of them. So making a Animatics as pre-visualization is just a promotional tool. This is the way to attract the resources. And the other reason is, I'm talking now about works in which computer effects are very important. The marriage, which is complicated and very costly indeed, has to be properly planned for. In Harry Potter, moving a frame by a couple of centimeters results in a cost increase by a couple of thousands of dollars because simply you have to add CGI's there and this is something that you must remember so for them it is the result of the industrial system the system of uh, fundraising in fact and we may think to what extent previs pre-visualization may help us Eliminate something that is counter-effective indeed. Certain people are very gifted, potential film directors, but they are not gifted scriptwriters. And when you look at the statistics, film directors that become successful, then very quickly you will see that much faster career is developed if you are able to write your own script. It does happen that the two gifts are given to a single person. You have the visual gift and you have good ears and you have good writing skills. So pre-visualization is a chance for those that are not that good in writing. It's also a way for those that are not necessarily able to write good text. And I would like to highlight it now. It is not to say that pre-visualization is not based on any script. The competition opened by FilmSpring. We collected 13 completed pre-visualizations. It clearly shows which of them... I, well, I can guess it. Perhaps I'm wrong. But I can guess that I could see which of them were made without a script and which of them were based on a kind of script written before the preface was made. The point is, very often our image of the future work is not necessarily clear. Well, sometimes we want to experiment. We want to tell a story in a different way. And in fact, the reason for which we do things in the cinema is simple. You want somebody in the room watching your film attentively. The reality made on screen exists only when between the screen reality and the audience there's an emotional charge. When the emotional charge disappears, then people leave the cinema room because they don't care anymore. So, previous pre-visualization, it's a chance. Well, we don't need target actors. You don't need Olbryski. Um, the Polish star mentioned yesterday. You could use your friends and then you can assess whether it will be an interesting figure, whether dialogues are not too lengthy and what the structure of the work is. You don't have to spend so much money. Your 
breath is can be shot in a single room and you may use quotes from other films you can have an action scene taken out from a different film and simply in the prefaces that we collected we'll discuss it in detail we'll analyze them and we'll try to help them to improve their works very often they said they had establishing quotes they functioned well well I have selected as an example for the discussions in the previous group I have selected the film The Blue by Krzysztof Kieślowski I did it because he was a very special kind of artist he had a different route and it's a very good example how being different can make you a successful person I remember us from the film school we were all uh, showing off and at that time he was making films documentaries and a documentary basically is mostly made at the best production and he not only made many of them he was also very happy to help others so whenever any of us had any problem uh, with their film it was the only and the first address you called him and he laughed post-production so he laughed editing and he laughed offering advice helping others saying how to improve things so briefly in fact all the films of Kishlowski were made at the audition table so the initial starting point the script during filming got changed and I guess uh, 30 to 40 percent was changed and afterwards 10 or 20 percent was changed by him at the time of audition so the distance from the script and the final film was always huge I use this example because you might say Krzysztof Kieślowski got pre-visualization by using his own body he died because he put himself into incredibly difficult situations and he did things that are just impossible after 12 hours of filming you must not go to the audition room work for four hours sleep three hours and film for another 12 hours go for a post-production stage and it just killed him so simply the addition on set is one of the key requirements in the new definition of filmmaking and here in bullets i show what i think might help you with pre-visualization previous can I show how attracted the film would be from the point of view of future distribution can i can remember my first film as a film director it was four and a half hour long i thought it was good i mean the more the better but unfortunately it was so so well these films were never fantastic but four and a half hour i spent eight months trying to cut it down but i was filming for a half hour i couldn't cut it down whenever i cut anything it was getting worse and worse so in a way it's engineering yes filmmaking we don't write a novel when you write a novel you don't um, worry whether it will be a hundred of pages or 400 pages however you have to operate within a system when you make a film and very often you feel that the subject is not really justifying an hour and a half of filming simply the product is too long sometimes things are reduced mechanically and the end product is not satisfactory at all you have to remember that filmmaking is a process a process that's sort of stronger than life it always starts with a fascination i can't imagine any film director starting the creative process his uh, writing or adaptation 
without love. It is an act of love, but the act of love is dispersed because of the system. You have to write the screen or your adaptation, and then throughout months, enough years, you have to beg around for money. Then you have to ask a million of uh, producers, actors, cameramen. You have to retell your story hundreds of times. First day, young film directors, well, they are not in love with their film any more it's like an old old wife that they would like to divorce but obviously they have to pretend they are young insecure filmmakers they um, are stressed but they have to show that they are the leader they know it all this is a very explosive mixture of attributes and in consequence very often and they it's not only done by young film directors, also well-known people do the same mistake. I mean, they forget about the real engine, the plot, the main element in the story. We'll talk about it later on when we talk about the structure of the previsualization, when we analyze its elements, and they focus only on episodes, on marginal stuff. And obviously, afterwards... Well, they lose their time, um, time on set, so about money. So the structure of the film is based on, based on the main anecdote, the plot. You may say that Previs is like a Lego structure and on set, you have the framework, the beginning, the main part, and the end, into which you have to put the key thing. Old film directors can simultaneously have the broad view of the total film, and at the same time, they can focus on details. Quite often, young people, because they have to be detail-focused, they forget about the big picture. It's a paradox, but a paradox that must be Remember, we need tools that would help us control these things. So pre-visualization has many benefits. With it, you also can have certain economy, so you can reduce redundant filming. You can very clearly see what is it, it was not. Decorations, quite often. I don't know how much time we have, but I have a great anecdote when I made well, I mentioned it myself. Okay, I say it because it's funny. With uh, Arthur the King, we had the saying that the battlefield, it was the biggest. Uh, Hadrian's wall was erected. It was the wall that divided England uh, when the wall was erected to defend pagan's part of England, and Hollywood filmmakers erected 1,200 long wall, 7 meters high, 4 meters thick for the scene. And we couldn't film it all. Uh, over 350 meters of the wall was covered by the forest. What is small, it's not the end. They constructed the uh, wall at the cost of $70 million in a valley. In a valley. You couldn't see it all with the camera. And the seven meter high wall, over a kilometer long from the position of the camera, looked like a little fence. Every child knows that when he or she is filming the mother and the mother should have nice long legs, you have to crouch. And if you have a wall in a, uh, in a wally, then it is dwarfed. It looks pathetic. So the decision was absolutely stupid, but that's not it. What is more, the sun was rising and setting, well, the last 30 minutes behind the wall. 
the wall. If the wall is here, it was illuminated in a flat way all the time. And I had a battle scene that we were making for a whole month. So for a whole month, $17 million was behind my back because every DOP knows that in action you lose the architecture because of the dust. So the $70 million is shown perhaps in 5% of the film, and it should have been used in 50% of the scenes. So it's just an absurd, because obviously it was Hollywood, perhaps it's not your fault, especially if you have a small budget. And if in a scene that you need to, if you need a scene in a bathroom and somebody adds um, an antechamber and kitchen to the flat because they seem appropriate. So it's an obvious loss, financial loss. And it is true about very many elements in equipment planning and all kinds of planning. Uh, and as for literature, everybody would imagine things in a different way, in a plan with a margin. It's normal in this profession when philosophy of filmmaking, which I will talk about, can be expressed in a simple sentence. But before I say this sentence, perhaps I should share some other remarks on the benefits of previsualization. You have to remember that talking to specific artists is very complicated. If two people talk about the picture, they have they could talk for 24 hours about the picture and still each of them will have a different vision of the picture. And the same is true about music. In your previsualization, Wojtek Majewski is doing it in his Ekran program. He shoots one scene and tries special effects, visual effects or music. Uh, quite often in our profession, um, threat is overwhelming. I talked about film education. You have a great, great formal idea. However, when you have the burden of the money given to you and you're under pressure, you start hesitating. Shall I really use my formal uh, concept? It might be too risky. And as Germans say, you would rather choose something that has been tested before. And unfortunately, in creative work, you have to discover new things. And it's the scene of the Polish cinema, the so-called genre uh, cinema copies patterns from the past. Why should you watch a copy if you can watch the master copy, the original, and previsualization, not the whole of it, because it would cost too much. However, you may try to use certain elements in it. And the sentence, well, it's a killing one. The system is based on the sentence. In the shortest possible time within the budget given to us, we have to equip the film director with people and tools that are necessary to make the film. There are different budgets in the US and in Europe. In the US, in a way, you have to be able to spend money. And, well, my whole career there will be finished with the first film because when I came there to make the first film in Northern Carolina, after two days, the atmosphere was horrible because they saw my list of equipment and they thought they uh, have an idiot that asked for a single camera only. At that time, I didn't know that in the U.S. the insurance requires a second body on Sad. Nobody told me this, so I asked, just like in Poland, I asked for a single camera. It's good that uh, we had the camera for the whole day, because in Poland we sometimes had a camera only for an hour. And something more, I have already mentioned all the important things. Kishlovsky died because of this. Kishlovsky died because he was not given an opportunity to think about what he was doing. And there's another anecdote. I was in a jury of a competition. I mentioned it today. Um, Piekarz was given Grand Prix for her film Prengi. And she met me for coffee, and she was talking about the film. And she said that after two or three weeks of filming, Zanussi 
uh, was producer, yes, and stopped it because the money was short. I mean, they were out of money, and they basically wanted to uh, stop filming. And she was so desperate, she wanted to kill herself. She went to the um, editor's room and she started editing. And she said, you know what, when I put together what I have done, I realized it was so stupid, I had to change it all. And when the money arrived, I was already doing an absolutely different film. And I answered her with an anecdote that I also found somewhere else. Woody Allen always made his films in this way, in the past, not now. He used to do exactly the same stuff. He got a crew and he did a couple of things, important scenes, the key scenes for the film. Then he fired them all. Uh, he rewrote the script, uh, called for the crew back and continued the film. And it, these breaks were planned for. Nobody stopped him. Uh, he simply needed the time to rethink his... Well, Kieślowski died because he wanted to know what film he was in. And to know it, he had to edit the film in the meantime. Look, go to the editor's room and look at the material that you made during the first night. It's a craze. From 15 cameras, you got millions of running meters of material without any sense. You have to put it into some kind of sense to learn whether you have anything precious in it. I know film directors that are gifted and can assess uh, what they've got, but most of us um, doesn't have this gift. You may assess a scene when it has been put together already. And it's again misleading because it's a brick in a wall. And again, back to pre-visualization, if you assess the scene by itself, again, our assessment differs when you see the scene by itself or the th scene in the context of the total film. So Kishlowski, whenever I worked with him, I could see it always while making the film, we had three or four screenings made by him of slightly edited film. And always we had very serious changes. Very serious? Well, I won't talk about it now, not because I don't want to, but simply because this is a subject of the pre-visualization session. There are many examples there if you are interested, if you want to know why he changed things, what was the reason, then please come to our pre-visualization lecture range. And another thing that is all also we are sentenced to it in Europe. I made perhaps six American films and with all of them I had add-ons and again uh, the film has sort of uh, keep on repeating it. Author of the King. I had two weeks of additional filming. Two weeks in Europe. Uh, he will have a feature film made, but they, this was two weeks of extra time. 18 weeks. So the additional shooting time. It can be meaningful, it can rescue the project. Two years ago in this place, we had Janek Komasa, and he presented his film Salon Samobuitz of Suicider's Room. And I'm thankful for his words till today. He said what changes he had to introduce, because after editing the full film, he realized he was wandering in the darkness. But he had the good luck that his producer was an artist, Kapuściński, and he did give him additional shooting days. They exceeded the budget many times. If the film was made with a different producer, if Komasa was not given the money for additional filming, the suicide room would be a poor, poor film, just as very poor was the blue after first editing. I didn't know where to look. I was so embarrassed to see the first version of the film. I say it very often, uh, they say I've made a film, and there's a person that always did it in the same way. It's surprising. And I say to him, 
you know, Kishlovsky now, when you're finishing your editing, he would start editing. Kishlovsky would now start, and you say it's all done and ready, and you think your film is ready. So you must not resign too early. I repeat it so that you could remember. We plan a marginal. Uh, we plan for too much decorations, equipment. So with the budget, we cover everything that we can. So our events are always, always overpacked. I always have some lamps just in case. They are never used on set. And there are always too many dresses, too many costumes that would never be used. So the additional redundant stuff that it's made just in case, this is real money, not to say anything about transportation. That's a separate story. However, at the same time, the so-called quickness of filmmaking uh, requires various film direct departments to uh, get bigger and bigger, allegedly, at the sake of time, uh, but at the cost of the film, the person that's most hurried up to by the first assistant to the film director is the director, and the victim is the film that we see in the screen. So this is the victim. And it is not true about big film director really cool when he makes a mistake he says it to all the crew you know what I fucked up the film I have to do it again but he's the producer he's spending his own money and he can say something like this however a young film director in the US but in Europe and everywhere else too has no right to say something like this something that's made badly is just bad, it will remain bad. Like the shooting set will not be changed. And the shooting set made by the first film director is bad. It's bad because he's only thinking about the economy. And very often it's so uh, that in the background, for the background we have a lot of time, but for the key scenes we have no time at all. And very often it's a bad luck. Uh, that we are forced to do certain things. We are simply not able to do something correctly. And I made dozens of films that were sentenced for failure because of a bad preparation or just sh stupid shooting plan. All right. Then spending less money means more shooting time, the economy. I'll talk about it in a moment. And on the other hand, using something that perhaps is it's an American model and it is supposed to be very uneconomic the second crew model I don't think so and I'll try to prove it in a moment so making or having the second crew to accelerate things that can be accelerated so a single crew system that is applied in Europe very often consists in the fact that the whole big crew, a big part of the crew, is waiting for making details, um, establishing um, a glass a straw in it. When it can be done by the second crew much smaller, they can also play a number of uh, supportive roles, which I will cover later. So let's start uh, talking about film professions, because it seems to be meaningful. It's also, in a way, our problem as well and when you look into the future you have to think seriously about it well mostly the system is changing and automatically new professions uh, are formed but is it to say that old professions disappear no not at all um, and for example as for the visual professions well I made feature films once when the whole film was built with three cameramen. So there was the operator and the assistant, but not always, uh, not necessarily the second cameraman. Uh, he, he was an assistant and he was driving and the driver and 
And then everything else that we did was just laboratory and copy making, and that was it. And now films are not made like this anymore. Now in the film you need a man for recorder, recording, a man for digital effects, plus you have post-production. You make semi-finished products today. When you look at... Um, when I looked at the camera uh, in the past, I could see what viewers would see, and now we have absolutely new professions, and you who's the author of the film, we really don't know. And I would like to remind you, when John Say was given the Oscar for Cohen's film, and they always show a part of the film, and he, collecting the Oscar, said, I'm here by coincidence because everything that you showed in the screen uh, was made by the second crew. I would like to congratulate you boys. And I get the same stuff, Black Hole Down. They usually show us scenes that I didn't make myself. It was fully done by the second crew, the helicopters. Well, obviously, there was also the picture that was made even more beauty, beautiful by the computer. And now uh, the eyes of the film, they are based on two uh, professions. Uh, you will have to read a whole list of professions now. And the first problem here is the problem of who shall decide in a normal feature film, who shall decide on the visuals of the film. And the paradox is, in Poland, this is the DOP, and in America, this is the stage director, because uh, DOP, pardon, stage director is engaged much earlier because they have to build the um, decoration. And when the DOP comes to the set, very many decisions, visual decisions, have already been made. However, in Europe, because of the tradition I'm talking here about Poland, well, things differ in different countries. However, the profession that's asked to cooperate first, well, it was like this in the past. It was um, the DOP that was required to be involved in the preliminary scene planning, and he or she could influence the process. And I think this model is more modern because the stage designer, great artist, is never present there during shooting. He or she prepares another location while we shoot, and they don't live everyday life of the filmmaking, all the way from technical to the scenization part. The, a drama depends on where we are, how you discover these places, how they function in the interaction between film heroes and the background, the scenery constructed there. So I think that, well, thinking about the wall, it's a drastic example. However, exactly perhaps at that time, even at that time, you might have done it in a computer. You never want, needed to erect an actual brick wall. And they wouldn't do it. They wouldn't have done it if they had asked the operator, the camera operator, to get on the set earlier. And new professions have emerged after Klappelauder, who is a profession. I don't know whether it's needed. I don't know. I'm not sure. Very often, it's only paperwork. When we worked with Henio, he would uh, have 10 cassettes. He never wanted any, never needed any clap loader. And I'm talking about features now. And now let's go through the professions. Uh, the conflict of the vision, this is what I'm talking about. Who's responsible for the whole thing? Really, you don't know. Um, I gave you just an example. And what is more, and it's also relevant here, a stage designer comes at the beginning and in the process, it's easier for him to spend the money. When we come to the stage in a bigger project, then the budgets are already um, made smaller because of certain ex problems before. So at the stage when a DOP is involved, the money is limited. And that is why stage designers build 
for life, not for a specific film. And now the role in small thing, films, by using these big examples, I'm not really thinking about big, big films. I don't care about big films. If you have lots of money, you can spend it the way you want. And I also love doing it. You get a couple of million more. So I ask for two trucks full of lights. Why shouldn't I have the pleasure to get more toys to play with on set? However, in small films, the films that you make, every single slot it counts. And when you think about... Uh, stage designer, it's really about choosing the existing locations and quite often you repaint a wall or make something look older, antique, however do you need proper stage director? Isn't it enough just to have the cameraman to do it and the education um, of the stage designer is very often somebody that completed architecture or fine arts academy. So with their background, they cannot know too much. Do we have a stage designer here in the room? Anybody? They will never come to join us. Never. They don't care. Because they build things. And it's not a good attitude, to be honest. So then... It is quite important to think how the visual model can be changed. But now let's have a look at the cameraman. All right, I told you, I could see a lot. However, this profession loses its value. In the past, you used a single camera, not always. And talking about, say, modernity, I never thought that it's really fighting for life. Certain DOPs would use a single camera, others would prefer multiple camera approach because it's faster or contemporary. However, a very interesting phenomena. As for the position in the film crew, DOP used to be very high in the hierarchy. However, now the editor is much more important. Why? Because we film so much. Because the footage is cheap. And feature films in Europe, um, in the past it was one out of 21 to 40. But in Poland it was one to five. You really had to think cautiously what we shall film. Anything that you filmed made it to the end film. And now a generation is growing up, a generation which use the computer language. What you see is what you get. You have to see it to confirm that it functions or not. You have the tools and right away automatically you can see. We, in my day, we didn't have um, anything that would help me see it. I just had not the ref reflex the camera. I had um, the film that I had to be developed in the laboratory and the technique was imperfect. We are talking about 14 blends uh, of latitude, but if I got five blends, it was a lot. Making any mistake in lighting or in exposure was tragical. So everything had to originate here in your head. So I had a totally different preparation for my profession. It's not criticism. I was just prepared differently. And it's just a fact, nothing more. However, because now things can be done and seen instantly, and you see a lot, and very often you see, and you know it, there are products that are great as for the picture, but the content is poor. Uh, so the editor's work is much more important because the selection matters. And what is more, the editor is the person that stands in between the DOP who goes away because in a moment you'll get your computer artists and they will decide. And what and who decides is the film director and quite often it's really the producer. I was sitting in the hall like this one, and behind me there was a producer uh, with uh, his spouse, color collection, correction, yes. And to me. 
<laughs> yes. So because the spouse said it was too green, so the producer said too green. All right, I will not quarrel with them. They have the millions to offer. So I don't quarrel with the producer's wife. So today, with the tools of today, we cannot be authors of the film anymore. We have to quit our vision. We cannot be active. Now the film director sitting at a screen, he or she can assess what he is watching now, forgetting that notes are bad, that basically the material from the camera is to be further processed and the cameraman shall have the chance. They do know what they can do with the material and I was always fighting in my films so that I was always fighting to get the working copy. Uh, at night I was calling people, explaining things because of a simple reason. Every producer and every film director gets used to a certain view of the film and even if it is bad and even if there are mistakes there, they don't want to change anything. This is the effect of a young couple, young married couple. They get a child and it's, you know, for an onlooker from outside, they keep an ugly creature in her, in their hands. It looks like a monkey and the mommy and daddy are crying. Our child is so beautiful, sweet little eyes. And this is uh, what the producer and film director would do at the end when they see their films. It's their beloved child, so they behave like this always. So the toys are dangerous in a way. Quite often they make it impossible for you to produce a good thing. They're counterproductive. How things could be? Okay, we shouldn't um, criticize anymore. Well, with full responsibility, I have to say, uh, this role can be played by the stage director, but now to, um, you know, you have to remember that the profession of the cameraman is um, coming to the end. We are defending an integral vision of the film. We don't need technical education to make a good picture in your camera. If you, if you have HDR, with the range, you can get anything with this technology that's available today. It's incredible today. It will get even better. So you need an artist that would be responsible for the whole thing A to Z. And such an artist should be both cameraman and the set designer. He or she should be responsible for the total vision of the film. When we say that our fundamental instinct or talents uh, these are the eyes and ears. It should be the eyes of the film, the visual director. I know it's a revolution. However, please think about it when you plan for your small films. Shouldn't you have a single person responsible for the whole process A to Z together with post-production? It's not so that you have to be a slave to engineers or other artists because um, the artistic origin of the film, the film director should be responsible for it. And now, obviously, it is possible. And because of that, you have certain logistical problems. Uh, second cameraman, he should not be low in the hierarchy. He should be your partner. We've tried it here in Film Spring Open. We made films in a group and always you had more than 10 cameramen every day. You had different person preparing the set, different person uh, setting the lights. Good films. You have to check our uh, film Crossing Paths. <coughs> it was a film, very good film, I would say. It was made by how many directors? Florent, you were one of them. How many directors do we have? Yeah, 12 directors we had in the film. And 12 cameramen. You won't feel it was done in such a way that it was a team effort. You will have a sense 
that it was made by a single person. So if you have second cameraman as a partner, he or she will have prepared background, lightning, and there's no problem later on with authorship. You decide, but you have a colleague that works for you. All right, and now the following example. I'm jumping from subject to subject because if I, if I were to cover it all, I will keep you here till midnight. In the room, there's my colleague Mateusz. No, he's run away because I said I would criticize him. Mateusz says, me, uh, lighting director, gifted me, I will never arrange the track. He's my friend, but I think that uh, he's mistaken here. You know Mateusz, the light. He will never do it. I like you, Swavek, but I will not do the track for you. I had this film in Mexico. I had a light um, expert and Indians, and they did everything. They did the tracks. What is more, a doctor. The doctor was a part of the crew, and they worked three times faster, and we didn't have the problems that we see in Europe open air, uh, light, uh, and they have coffee, yes, and grips, they do all the stuff. Small interior, no place for too many, too much movement, electricians sweating and grips drinking coffee. Each of the department would have the van, three quarters is empty in each of the van. You have uh, some leathers, camouflage, magic stuff. So briefly, one team is working, the other team is having coffee. And if you have some economy, you can accelerate things greatly. And I say it because I'm an experienced DOP, and I say no professional dignity. It is just about pre tending, preventing certain dignity. Well, Dolly, it was over a thousand kilos, so you had eight bridges because it was so heavy. And it was an absurd. In the American system, what is more, the grip would also arrange all the foils, all the banners. Um, so when you are 200 meter away from the set and you ask a person to keep the light to the right, and I can see it would be better basically to move the screen. So I say, leave it, leave it there, leave the lamp, just the screen shall be moved. Move it behind Betty to the left. You know what he would say? Great idea, great idea, but it's not my department. And then the grip would go to, you know, 200 meters walking. He wouldn't touch the screen. And if I stand with my camera next to this wall, let's say in the decoration, I stay next to it, and the whole team of grips, 20 of them, no wall. And when I brought first time to America, I brought a dolly, a panther, a German one. And when I asked them for the ride, what they did it was done in the following way. They put the racks, and the racks are portable. Everyone is separate. And the partitions are also separate. It's a lot of work. And on it, they put this monstrous Western dolly, yes? And the Western dolly, everybody had to put, get on it, the sound uh, director and the film director. And it's a pity I didn't film there. It would be a, a f historic thing, um, photo, a panther standing on dolly. The biggest cinematography of the world is still obeying these standards, but they can afford it. They are not forced to do something else because they earn lots of money. If they earn lots of money, they can throw the money out of the window. It's their job. We don't earn lots of money. What is more, we don't even have lots of money, so we must not throw things out of the window, and we should rather try to be more clever. All right. Editor's work. I've mentioned it before. Uh, his director, music director, you have to be very cautious. And with him, there was a problem because obviously, because of the evolution in the profession, there's a new quality in it. And when the addition is made away from the 
said after filming has been finished, the film director loses control over the footage. So what he wanted to do is then filtered through the sensitivity of the editor. And quite often they are gifted artists. However, they already make certain selection. And with the amount of material made, I don't really know a director. I'm thinking now about big films, but it will be true about small things soon. They are not able to say it all. Very often the film director has to rely on the opinion of the editor. So they have to rely on other people's proposals. And I believe, and I had a pleasure of working, once again I'm referring to the same person, it will be repeated here many times, Krzysztof Kieślowski. Well, for sure he was a good uh, scriptwriter, film director, but he was great in addition. He always did it by himself. Surely he had uh, an assistant, somebody had to keep the place clean, but he loved scissors, he loved putting things together, and he was fantastic because he spent millions of hours in the editor's room, and he would not allow anybody to be involved in editing, and he said the sentence once, which I can remember till today, addition for me is about rediscovering the spirit of the film, thanks to addition, I can rediscover the film myself tonight. And I invite you, uh, you will watch a very simple film in the Świat, different world. You have an old lady, an actress, some of you know her very well, Danotasha Flarska, and she's talking. Please think what the value of the film comes from, the composition, the addition. Did you sign it together, Dorota? Oh, no, Dorota and Arthur, they are gone. How did she manage to put it together in such a way? The value of the film comes from the composition. The addition. Surely she's very charismatic an actress. However, the construction of the film is so valuable. All right, that's it about addition. You need editor on set. Why they are not on set? Technologically, it was impossible in the past, but now the camera can export mm, data and they can start the editing on set. And instantly the film director can see, can know what scene was produced. Why should they work away from the set? What is more, there would be an agreement on the intentions. Yes, the director has their vision and the editor is working accordingly. Surely they can have their own a vision, their own opinion, however, they should give a chance to the artist number one to do the stuff in their own way. And editing on a set also makes it possible to try different versions of the film. If you disagree with the film director, do your own version and then you can compare them. A sound engineer, well, again, you have Yes, we have a sound director here, Bartek. We invited him. However, very rarely they attend our meetings. Well, Film Spring is not the key. However, sound directors uh, have an approach they profession as if they were a craftsman. But it's that's an important media of expression as the film itself. So you need certain knowledge on the dramatic impact of the film. And there's the same problem here with the sound and the picture. This is dispersed authorship. On set, very interesting backgrounds are recorded. Afterwards, they're given to the editors post-production. Do you think that they look through everything, that they listen to thousands of sounds? Well, surely it's easier to take something from the archives. And look again some outstanding films, when you close your eyes, how strong, well-suited facts, how they make us immerse in the film, how important the soundtrack is. Surely the sounds made on set are afterwards 
processed by specialists that are equipped with marvelous toys, but you lose certain integrity. If these people are not present on set, when I got my Oscar nomination, I was sitting at the table with a couple of men that happened to get an Oscar, and each of them had a collection of uh, 10 or so, because they are quite good in winning Oscars. They always make big films and they win awards. So for them, basically every season brings another Oscar, and they have great guarantee that they will receive one more prize next year. They have marvelous tools, but do they really use all the potential? I don't think so. How it could be, just to remind you, it is really a list of practical things. Well, we are ready, lights are ready, sound engineer has started playing putting the microphone into the costume. When you count the time lost, when you prepare costumes for sound recording, and then all the remarks that there was rattling sound in the background, why don't you do it before? Why main actors don't have micropods right from the beginning in the dressing room? I don't understand why sound engineers very rarely go to the selection of the location and then they complain that now and again they have a train passing by. I'm deaf, so I don't care about trains passing by, but they can hear sounds. Quite often locations are selected and they are unacceptable sound-wise, but it's their fault because sound directors are not involved in film preparation early enough and it should be changed. This artist should be as important as the visual artist. They are very often... Um, underestimated and a practical example, pre-visualization have a common feature. Not all of them, but most of them, very often. They might be interesting. You see everything, visually interesting. However, very often the sound is very bad. It shows it's easy to make an act's picture, but to record good sounds is more difficult. Who the film director is? Uh, he's the accountant, PR manager, scriptwriter, film director in one. Today you cannot be a director only because um, there are plenty of them. You have to promote yourself. It's an obligation. It's a must. Without self-promotion, you won't survive. We are not in the 19th century. We can't believe that somebody will discover you once. Nobody will discover you if you don't promote yourself. It's important. But when you look at the number of professions, an accountant, it's an important profession as well. You heard yesterday the knowledge is very often um, the knowledge of the film director. Quite often the film director doesn't have uh, the producer, so they run away, they think, co-production, they look for partners, send letters. And, well, when I came for the first time to make a film uh, in Germany, and it was communistic Poland, so I thought I was talking to an accountant, not the film director of the future film. And now the model that I would like to mention the second crew. The film director who would like to be responsible for everything very often forgets about his own sensitivity. Well, I may exaggerate However, when I worked with Vita, I worked in two films. The first one, um, I was the second cameraman, and in the second one, I was first cameraman. He would usually sleep on set, and Andre, why are you asleep? Uh, you know what, Swavek, when I wake up and I'm surprised, it means it's good. And when I wake up and there's nothing interesting, I fall asleep. Well, surely it's like an exaggeration, it's an anecdote, and he can be very energetic indeed. However, the role of the film director that takes a distance and he behaves like the first viewer that wouldn't focus on all the little things. It's much better than the role of a film director who's so much um, emo so emotional that he would talk for 15 minutes to an actor. The actor is more and more puzzled and says, look, but all I have to say is no. So how can I put all the things that you covered into my no? So this is just an example of... 
a young person that cannot see the work as it is being done, but he or she can see the work only through his own vision. And I can conf confirm you that very often you get lost. I talked about producers already. I will skip it because I was talking for such a long time. It's about the future production model and the people that are ready for the change. An example, I would not like to criticize too much. I'm really thankful to the young Kipa people that came to us last night, but they talked about the current state of affairs. Most of you know about it. I did not hear yesterday anything that would really give me hope that the production world can be changed. And to some extent, their analysis should open new ways. And I will encourage you to, when you think about film production as a new profession, you should be creative because fundraising is obviously terribly important, but much more important because of you know some healthy economic uh, calculations. If you spend the money, it should show in the screen. You shouldn't spend the money in stupid ways. We spend money in a stupid way often. Well, we are in the process. The pre-visualization competition was not as successful as we, well, I'm not to talk about it. All institutions financing films were represented at Nina, Peace, Polish Television, Orange was involved, and also mm, the Krakow Katowice Film School CG project mm, from the mm, World of Games. None of previsualizations were awarded by them. And we wanted to produce one film as a case study. Let's not talk about it. I know that words are not helpful. You can listen to me, you nod me, but you should rather try. We should develop a mechanism and not students' film. These people have to make money. Uh, let's make a film with healthy financing mechanism. And one of the elements that I would like to cover at the end, because I'm not going to present it, we have to limit another problem. When you are on set, you see lots of trucks. And when you analyze things, you may see there's room for restructuring. You can have a single track, perhaps we'll manage, but still it's more paper-based project. Robert Haczynski will show it to you in a moment, such a 3D model of Cinebus. So we assume that you can make a small actor's film in which the only track would be a bus with a place for two makeup um, uh, seats and all these things could be put together into a small post-production studio uh, showroom Robert you have to start your presentation well obviously we started with drawings and the platform was a normal mass production auto sun bus and now we mostly talked online on how the issue shall be tackled. And we started with certain sketches, drawings where the makeupist will work, where we will have the um, dressing room, the technical section of the bus. So these are the initial drawings. And in a moment, I will have three dimensional simplified view. So here you can see the description roughly in the bus. Mostly, when you look from the beginning, you have a little, we call it backup area or an area where you can eat, take a rest. Then you have the dressing room, makeup area. Afterwards, you have a place where you have the cameraman's uh, position with proper monitoring. It's not. It's Video Village. It's rather 
Yeah, so this is simply a view, set view. Then you have the technical part, backups, camera, appliances, addition. Then we change the idea slightly. However, what might be interesting here, the bus is not just a vehicle for film production. In the bus, there was an idea that inside we could have a projector and outside we could have mini cinema in which you could watch dailies or pre edited material you can exchange your opinions on the footage all right so generally this is how it looks like from the top and right in a moment i will show you another stage of the project already with the cut program so it's not a drawing without attention to what you're already doing here you have already specific sizes and we talked what was doable on the chassis what wasn't we prepared this model and we talked online and we discussed how the thing should look like so the whole project it's still a working project of um, dozen or so of heads of different uh, departments, yes, representatives of sound engineers, film directors, um, cameramen, each of the departments discussed their needs and we f found a compromise and it's really a team work. So let's start from the top. Well, obviously, in the standard construction of a bus in agreement with constructors, we added something that has two functions. The first function, while traveling, it is um, the booth. And obviously, these segments are all over the top. Uh, when you open it, you get the place for cameras mounting uh, you can place antennas for the sound for viewing and basically there all the big things are placed uh, rails um, anything that can be exposed to rain however you can also have canopy top you're also having their elements for the canopy that will cover the small cinema so anything on the top on the bus is used as the transportation area or equipment transportation area and here you have very safe access to the top not dangerous and here starting from the back at the back you have a separated area in which you can have editing so right you can edit the footage on set and you have the third terminal for a person that would do some special effects visualizations with which we'll be able to have the scene completed and then on the side you have a place for film camera servicing area so lenses are changed and cleaned here the equipment is tested checked here on the other side you have terminals at which you will have a person responsible for backup next here there's no table top uh, for the clarity I'm showing you the construction now in here you will have a person responsible for DTS as so all picture correction and later on no change we have a place for the film director so the viewing area on the other side here you have a little place for the sound engineer on the side obviously you have connections so you don't have to pull the wires through the door you have the connection um, section here here you have the vision wall, the vision screen, and this is the area for makeup and costume change here. And the fundamental thing in the bus, it's difficult to know what film you will do. So the benefit is the fact that the construction, the inner construction of the bus is modular. 
Yes, I'll show it from the other side. So intervention, it can be used for big film productions as the digital center. So then you would uh, eliminate the artist's section. It's a big, big film. But we are now surely thinking only about small productions, but with modular construction, you can use the bus only as a digital center. Well, yes, and at any time you can uh, reset the system to have more space for electronics or perhaps less space for electronics and more area for actors. At any time you can move things out, uh, you can very easily rearrange things. It's lightweight and repeatable elements are inside. You don't have to order the interior elements to re for reconfiguration uh, to rechange the setting inside. Uh, what also differs here is that on this side we would like to have bigger tent, but it's going to be a tent. It won't be attached physically to the bus, but the projector will be inside the bus. And in here we will create the cinema area. Here obviously we will have canopy, so we will extend um, and we will have roof covered area so we could also put some equipment there. You don't have to take it out from the bus every time. And in here, unfortunately, it has not been shown in our project yet, but we'll have a loading platform. Loading platform that would be movable, uh, folding out of the bus. You will be able to get on it with a trolley so that loading and outloading could be as quick as possible. And now when you have this model and you have a session with designers or with people that decide how it should look like, we can very easily and quickly express our opinions, rearrange things, change the configuration even before we start constructing the bus. So this is a real benefit when you uh, use CAD for design work. I would like to add that at the bottom you would have grip, light, well in here, in these areas you will obviously also have a bathroom as always in buses. You have luggage area down there, self-efficient and you have electricity generator but you also have a hook to attach big electricity power generator. So we asked for a calculation, typical list of equipment for a small productions. This bus should cover 100% of the equipment. And if you need anything more, well, to add a pickup is not too much. It's a great economy vis-a-vis -vis the great number of trucks that we use on sets. And we know it's not going to be easy because it's really against previously mentioned Mateusz opinion. I, uh, I understand him. He wouldn't like his profession to be treated like this. He loves his truck and he loves driving it and he's not really willing to work in something like that. But I guess that the world is going forward. Technology is changing. We have to be innovative. And this kind of undertakings, they, are, they seem to be reasonable. And I can bet such a bus, using this bus on the set, uh, it's the economy of two days. Why? It's the value of two shooting days. Why not to use it? This is actual economy and the real shooting time. I think this is really most important. Well, now I have an idea, perhaps some. Yes, please, this is. We are open to your suggestions in such a bus. Nobody's perfect, nobody knows it all. Robert, I'm just starting to ask for questions. I understand, thank you very much. And just as Robert has announced, we are waiting for your questions, suggestions. Perhaps you have a better idea. Well, this design, we don't have the time to talk about it truly. Well, we were supposed to be given something from the Autosan factory today but they have like dr dramatic change of the managing board. They say that the project uh, is maintained, but they didn't send the prototype um, 
or a description of it. What all we have is just a work in 3D version, which is perhaps important for the interested ones. However, as for the presentation, it is not enough. You can't see the practical uh, value of it. So perhaps we shall switch on the light and we may open a discussion if you obviously have any questions. Well, as for the production plans, we have talked to four institutions already and we are encouraging the digital department of the Ministry of Culture to support the reconstruction of the bus. Autosan is ready to give us, well, give us. They obviously treated as a boutique kind of activity. This is a factory that used to produce 17, 18 buses um, a day, and now they produce one bus a day, and they drastically looking, dramatically looking for a market for the product. And as in producing the idea of cheaper film productions, we would like to present this bus during different festivals in film schools as a potential model of cheap production. And at the same time, we would like to use it for the cheap production. This is what we would like to do. So this is the input of the Ministry of Culture. We don't have the decision yet, but we rely on it. We are very much supported by the National Audiovisual Institute in this project. And as for the equipment, we have some preliminary commitment from Canon and HP. As for the necessary equipment, cameras, projectors, computers, so these are the four institutions that, well, we don't have any agreement signed, but discussions are ongoing and we hope for the best. Well, the mere fact that without too much problem all the time it's developing, well, I hope, I hope, I keep my fingers crossed, we are working very hard for the success. Questions to the microphone. Give him the mic. This I don't know. Uh, so we have the frame of the bus, yes? So they have prepared something already. And still, would you have the people, specialists, like light specialists? Because in most projects, we have cameramen that have some rudimental knowledge of the light, but in proper production, they need experienced light engineers. Do you expect that you will have, you know, the, these special services? Will you have the people that know the equipment on board, the people that would be able to support a crew? Some fantastic operators, uh, they have the experience of the light specialist. It's not a well-known model of career in Poland, but in the American model, perhaps it's the better model than anything else, than the film school indeed. I think also from very many people that don't have a job, they are a cameraman, but they have an opportunity to meet people, make money, to work. Well, one of our partners, one of our colleagues, I met him because I involved him to pull cables in a film. He asked me, could I uh, support you? And then it turned out that he made best takes. I made two films with him and we cooperate on a regular basis. I wouldn't like to mention his name because he didn't allow me to do it. But this is how it works. Film Spring is a place where you meet people. And I think that very many, many people like the fact that they can get together, get involved in projects. They devote their own time, we cannot afford pain of the corporates. I feel that there's a good aura around us. Nobody thinks that there's some willing and dealing in it. There's no uh, monkey bin business. Uh, we are fair and honest, and we just want to make things easier. And I'm not a producer myself, and thinking about production, I just use my experience. I made a couple of films, and I try to describe it. Look, 
just to be to provide some examples in our website in the competition section pre-visualization unfortunately only in Polish don't have translation into English however you have a detailed description you have two essays a single essay talking about production changes and the other essay a more precise one more precise than my presentation now it's a longer document it's all described, it's all written down, so you can, these are not words only, apart from the presentation, if you are interested in a detailed description in points, because definitely I omitted certain issues, so in the Film Spring Open website you will find, and also you have a new service made by our colleague, Talarek, it's called, it's, under, it's a new tag under... I don't remember. I don't remember, but there's a new tag, and it's interesting. Uh, they specialize in searching for tutorials for films, discussions with film directors, how they made their films. Terribly important, terribly interesting. It's a good manual. Uh, it's a monograph on how films are made. I really encourage you. Michał Talarek is doing it. This is his service and we are all linked to each other. Questions? You're so tired. Thank you very much.